And, and that's the question I think for most artists to really ask themselves is like, where is it coming from? My God, that's so profound. Like I, just the way you put that. Let them tell creative insanity. Creative insanity. Hey, I'm Servant. I'm a rap artist, producer, and filmmaker from Alberta, Canada, and my guest today is Nick Cherwink from San Diego. Originally starting out as a musician, Nick navigated himself into a decade-long spanning career in the music industry. From working at Capitol Records to teaching creativity and business at Icon Collective, a premier music school in Los Angeles, he later moved on to pursue making his own coaching program for artists but he has recently grown beyond that too, working with more than just artists as he's discovered his passion for helping people actually goes much deeper. The big theme of this episode is identity. And to be honest, I'm still thinking about some of the things he said to me. He challenges artists to look internally, to dig deep and really discover who they are. So yeah, this is one of my punchiest discussions at only 45 minutes long. It's got a fast pace, a little bit of vulgarity, and tons of inspiration. The guy has a magnetic energy that I'm sure you're gonna see if you're watching or you're gonna hear it if you're listening. Uh, let's just jump into it. Nick Cherwink, uh, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to Creative Insanity. Thanks, man. I love the name, Creative <laughs> Insanity. Let's get insane. Yeah. I'm down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of got a play on words. It's like insanity and then it's insanity, like creative mm. insanity. Uh, Cause you know, I'm basically just crazy trying to not be crazy in a creative way. And that's that's what it's about. It's about diving into uh, different creative minds and different aspects of it. And how do people stay sane? Because I just feel like it's one of the craziest things about life is if you're trying to make mm. shit and do things that are interesting um, and ineffable, like you just can't put a word to it, but it's just, it's art. That's hard to uh, stay sane in that territory. And I think that you're going to be a great guest guest a great guest because you've got a lot of really interesting experience why don't you just tell us a bit about where you come from because i know you've worked with artists in the past and you're you're working as a coach and uh mm -hmm. just tell me a bit about your journey where are you from what do you do why do you do it yeah all right man well you know my journey has had two parts to it you know er early early days i i i really was an artist i grew up making music my whole life played the guitar, played the drums, made beats, rapped, like was really, really into it. Um, and then I also got into sports. And so then I was kind of transitioned from the artist side into the athlete side. And that taught me a lot about like discipline and leadership and, 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 and personal growth. And so it's been this interesting trajectory of both of those two things living together, really what I would identify as kind of this balance of the masculine and the feminine, the feminine being the creative side and the masculine being like the structured, you know, the structured side. Yeah. And when, you know, I, I, I went to college, did the four year thing and, uh, you know, just wasn't really lit up or passionate about any of it. It wasn't until when I graduated that I realized like I had gotten this business degree, but I also loved music. So that sent me to LA to work in the music business. I just put those two things together and had a really cool career for over a decade living in LA, like really spent my entire twenties, just like living in LA, worked at Capitol records. I was a manager for artists, was in the EDM scene, like, Man. you know, got to travel a little bit. It was a very cool, a cool experience for sure. Yeah. And the whole time, I was also really into, as I'm working in the music industry, I also still had this, I had this passion for like personal development and I was reading all the, the self-help books and the Tony Robbins stuff and really learning a lot of that stuff, applying a lot of that stuff to my own life. And then naturally found myself just having a passion for teaching that stuff to other people. And so I've kind of ended up carving out this really interesting niche where um, you know, I, I was working with artists all along the way, but really bringing in this personal development side um, into working with artists, which really led me to life coaching. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that. Uh, yeah, like professionally now for, uh, you know, year and a half. Um, and it's been a really cool ride. It's been a really interesting, like unique kind of niche to fall into. Um, and I'm also now like evolving out of that and like finding a whole new passion yeah, yeah. with it. 
So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's quite the story. I mean, you're so well suited for all of that. And that's what's really cool to me is that um, you're just a naturally inspiring kind of guy. Like we've had we've had some conversations in the past before and I've kind of seen you on social media and been following what you're up to. And it's it's there's something to be said about someone who em- embraces life in a full sense. Like not only do you have this artistic side, this is the sort of feminine side, like you said, where you're able to um, really engage with life in a creative way, but you have this robust masculine energy where you're just like, like you're literally like jacked. You're like a GI Joe or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean that in a good it's, way. <laughs> it, it's so funny, man. One of my favorite things, one of my favorite things is the in the world is, you know, we all naturally just judge people by how they look. Like you see somebody and it's, 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 it's impossible to not automatically kind of come up with an idea of who that person is. And so for me, it's like, yeah, like I've got the buff white dude, jock (laughs) GI Joe looking, you know, I have my hair short. People ask me if I'm in the military all the time. And so it's like, it's like natural to come up, like to think I am a certain way. Mm -hmm. And, and there's nothing I love more than when people tell me they're like, wow, you know, you're really not anything like I expect you to be, (laughs) you know, like, cause I really am. I, I also, it's like, I grew up with like a single mom and sisters and like hippie parents. My middle name is African. Like I have this <laughs> whole fucking side of like growing up in this very interesting, diverse, multicultural, spiritual household that like my physical representation representation would never uh, really like, sh- you know, hint towards that. But yeah, I, I love it when I meet people like, damn, bro, you're like, you're, you're like way more deep than I thought you were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's like the. I just think that that's a great thing. It's uh, I sort of have a similar experience, not because I'm a GI Joe type masculine <laughs> guy. I mean, I I keep in shape, but it's that I rap, you know, and like I'm a white guy who raps, and uh, where I'm yeah. from, here in sort of small town Alberta, it's very common uh, that people just are like, oh, there's like Eminem, and that's it, and then there's other, mm-hmm. and then there's you know the other scene. And so I'm always associated with Eminem in a, like a sort of joking manner. Um, mm-hmm. And they think like, if you say you're a rapper too, people are often like, well, you're a wannabe rapper. Like you're not going to be mm-hmm. good because there's so many wannabe rappers who kind of suck and it's, they've yeah. sort of flooded the market with uh, a lot of fake BS. And, but then when they actually check my stuff out and they're like, oh, you're like an artist, you're actually a poet. <laughs> like uh, yeah. that, I love that feeling. Yeah, um, yeah. That, that's great. You're like, whoa, you're actually really dope. And I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. It's like, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I, I think it's a good lesson for, yeah, like don't judge a book by its cover. Even if the cover is nice, like don't mm-hmm. judge a book. You you don't really know what's inside. Um, mm-hmm. I'm curious a little bit um, about your creative. You said you did some rap. You said you were making beats and doing like playing guitar and all that kind of stuff. What was that yeah. do- like? What was that like for you? What was that doing for you in your life then? And why? do you do less of it now or do you do less? Yeah. Of it? Great. Really great question, man. And it, and it's, it's, it's something I has, it's something I ask myself. Like when I was young, I, I picked up a drumsticks when I was 10 years old and from especially high school, like from 10 years old, fifth grade, all the way through high school, it was like the most uninhibited, full-blown, unleashed, creative flow. Like I lived in this Mm. like full-blown, just like creative space, you know, zero period. I did jazz band. Then I would do like the drum line marching band for my sixth period. And then after school, I would go and play in a heavy metal band. Um, I was making, I was playing drums like six hours a day. And then I was like borrowing my friend's laptop and learning how to make beats. And we were writing raps (laughs) while we were in class. And it was just, it was so cool. And I think a big part of it was going, going to college and changing my environment. Um, that was a really big transition because I think, you know, I had, I had kind of a tough upbringing, like grew up, grew up really poor, grew up on the other side of the tracks, grew up with a lot of just like, um, broken home dynamics. And, and I was just like, I got to get the fuck out of here. Like that was my thing. And I realized going to college is my way out. Mm 
And I was also playing rugby. So that was, I, I didn't get into school for rugby, but it was just like this other part of my life. Um, and so when I went to college, it was really just like running away. Like I need to get away. And when I, and, and I really didn't have any idea of what I wanted to do when I got there. But to be honest, I was, I was pretty lost, like just being out and on my own for the first time. Um, I was also like a big party animal. Hmm. And so I just really fell into partying and caught like I was already partying hard in high school. But, um, you know, high school in that environment pr provided me the space to still be pr creative because like I had my band and I had these band classes and I had friends that make music. And then I, I left all of that and I was just kind of out on my own and and really fell into just like like, you know, was playing rugby and then half the rugby team was in a frat. We were just drinking like right, yeah. four nights a week. Like we were just getting fucked up. So I was like, <laughs> uh, that was really when music kind of more fell towards the back burner. Um, at the same time, that's actually when I did get more into playing guitar because I would just like jam on the guitar in my in my room. But that was kind of the beginning of when it 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 started becoming less a part of my life. And um, yeah, you know, there's there's for sure like a part of me that like you know, maybe it's a little bitter around that. Like I have a little bit of this pain and this sort of like, mm. oh, you know, like you were so, you were such a thriving artist back then. And it, it actually really came up for me recently because I've been coaching all of these artists yeah, and not making art. <laughs> and it's like, I've worked in the industry and I have all this great like personal development stuff. So, you know, so much of, of what we work on is more the person, not so much. I'm not like teaching people how to make music. I'm teaching them how to become better people. Um, but there was this part of me that just felt a little bit out of alignment or like, Hey, you know what? Like, I'm not really walking this artist path path with you. And, and, and I don't really, and I feel sort of out of integrity with, with, um, and also just a little bit like uninterested at this point. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, so it's, it's great. You asked that question. Yeah. You know, it was in my Facebook post the other day and, and, um, and, and, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a thing that's there for sure. And I question, I'm like, Hey, do I, do I want to make music? Like I can, it's still there. Like I have, I have Ableton, I got a guitar, you know, and, and um, you know, now and then, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of coming to terms with like, yeah, I'm not really inspired. I'm like, part of me, it's like, if I did make music, it's cause I'm trying to like dig it up from the past and be like, right. Oh, like uh, I know that I can, so maybe I should. And like, let me go and see what's in there still. Um, but I think I'm kind of coming to terms with really letting it go and really just following like really where is my passion now? Cause like once a year, I'll still go make a track, <laughs> like just to kind of prove that I can, like, you know, if you held a gun to my head, I could actually produce a really dope song right now, yeah. but I'm kind of like, eh, you know, am I inspired to really not, not so much. That's interesting. It's like you have a kind of set of ingredients for, um, where, what your output is in life. And one of those key ingredients for you is inspiration, is passion. Is it actually there for you? I, I can relate in a way because I'm a multi-talented guy. Um, to say it, I mean it humbly. I know there's a lot of gaps in my, my skill level and things that I've got to learn. But on the surface, I'm pretty fast at picking up most things. Like I, I'm, I'm very adaptive. I can learn basically any interest, instrument. I tend to be pretty virtuoso. And there's just some things that I'm not that passionate about. Like, um, people tell me all the time, like, man, you could kick ass if you did this. Or I get a lot of like, if you just changed genres, if you weren't mm. so hip hop, you know, if you did a little bit more country or, or stuff like that, I get that, you know, maybe you'd, maybe you'd kill it more. Maybe it connect with more people in your community. And I know in my head, it's like, if I sat down to write a country, country song, yeah, it would be really fucking good. I could do that. I could do a great job of it. Uh, but I'm not inspired to do that. I don't like yeah. it. It's not my thing. And just because you have the talent or the predisposition to do something doesn't necessitate that you have to do that thing. And I think that you're hitting on something really cool is that you don't seem to have this hang up with identity. Like, yeah, you said there's a bit of soreness or a bit of rawness there because you were you were kind of live in the artist's life and you wonder maybe if you kept up with it or something, if things would be different. There's a bit there, but you also seem very willing to embrace a completely, I don't know, not alter, but like complementary identity, something like helping people live full lives. Um, and that I think is, it takes humility. It takes like an immense authenticity, recognizing where you are in life. And that's something that not a lot of people can do with self-awareness. A lot of people are going to chase that, you know, 
that rock band mm. that they were in in grade 12 or whatever they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna chase that for years and years and years you know yeah the the idea of identity i think is such a such an interesting one to pick apart and especially for artists or anybody a lot of people like we just identify ourselves with what we do like mm. oh i am an artist and actually like if we want to just be so bold like no you not you are not an artist you make art yeah. you're a person <laughs> you're a person that makes art i like that i am not an artist you know it's like maybe in the moment while i'm making art i am an artist right but it's like you know i, I the identity thing is really big um I've gone through many transitions and phases like, yeah, my identity. Yeah. When I was younger, I was like, Oh, I was a fucking drummer in a band and I was the, you know, captain of the rugby team. And I was, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in college, I was like Hooters, the fucking party animal. That was my nickname. <laughs> I was just like this crazy, this crazy, like party animal. Uh, and then, you know, working at icon, I worked at icon collective music production school for like seven years. And so I was like, Mr. Icon, yeah. I was the fucking, the business guy, I was the industry advisor. And when I left that, it was this big, like, Ooh, like, yeah, really get to let go of that identity and become super conscious of how, how, um, attached, I guess, unconsciously attached to the, to, to these identities I've been, and and then also be really careful right now not to fall into oh nick the life coach right it's like what about like i like who who the fuck is nick without all of these labels and these layers of like clothing that i'm wearing yeah like what if i just take all of that off and get fully fully just naked <laughs> like who the fuck is nick yeah. and that's where i'm at right now really it's like yeah i do these things but like i don't really want to identify with any of them and i actually want to go like very deeply inward and just like bring out as much of that real raw authentic me that i can and and see where that goes what what you know what what does yeah i don't know what i don't know it's a cool it's a cool place to kind of get to and i see this so much and especially with artists especially when you have a brand it's like artists get so lost in becoming the 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 brand mm. right and and people you know like even you know, let's, let's say, um, I mean, your, your, your project is servant, yeah. right? Yep. So it's like, if people are calling you that all the time and like, they don't even call you Spencer, they call you servant. Then it's like, you actually become to identify yourself more with the project than you do with yourself. And I think this is one of the biggest things is, especially as artists go off to become really, really successful, they actually lose, they go, they lose sight of who they really, really are underneath all these layers of success and all these layers of identity that have been built up. And I've heard artists talk about how much of a head fuck is yeah. it is yeah. and, and how much of a, a mental health challenge it can be to go off on tour and be the fucking man. <laughs> and like, everybody loves you and everybody cherishes you. And you're just like, you know, you're getting all this praise and recognition, but it's not for you. It's for the brand. Yeah. Right. It's for the project. And then you got to come home and it's like, you know, you still got to co come home and like scrub the toilet and take out the trash and do yep. this shit that like normal fucking people do. And so the flip flop between those two worlds and those two identities actually causes it's a it's a really big head fuck for a lot of artists. Like I've heard big successful artists um, talk about that and like, yeah, I get it. So really, can you make art and do your thing and really stay super grounded in the authenticity of who you are without any of that shit? Yeah. Well, I think what stands out to me about about what you said is that there is a kind of safety in identity when you are seeking, like I am the artist or I am even like when you have a, a project like servant, for instance, like I, I am servant. This is a tent pole that I can hide under. And it's sort of like the more that you, the more thought you put into the brand and the more you put into it, it becomes like, I don't know, like you're making a sim in the sims you ever do that it's <laughs> yeah. like this is this is my character this is what they do and then it, it takes more of a pioneering spirit to walk away from some of those things sometimes and retreat inward like you said because there are fewer tent poles there there's there's less for you to grab onto because we're at our core very mysterious creatures you know like what what even is self um it's it's mm -hmm. such a bizarre the fact that we we're like meta animals and that is messed up um man yeah i i connect with so much of that it's a yeah and that that's why like for myself and i think it's important for a lot of artists 
like servant is I want it to be like me, but I have learned that there are certain aspects of me that I have to keep in check when being servant. And let's say like unbridled, unfettered honesty. I am a super open guy. I'm very close with my friends. I tell them like everything going on in my life. But you know, like let's say I'm, I'm having like issues with my wife or something like that. Well, servant shouldn't really be putting too much of that out there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, because yeah, it's not, yeah. it wouldn't be fair to air dirty laundry. And yeah. there's a lot of, there's a lot more that could go under the scenes that is helpful as opposed to on top of the scenes. Um, yeah. So like, yeah, you, you do learn to kind of have, the other thing too is like the, the algorithm of the internet can kind of guide you in identity. Like, well, it works when I'm positive. It works when I'm happy. Mm. If I say mm. sad, mopey things, people engage with me less. So I'm just not going to be that way so much on social media. Yeah. And you can yeah. actually miss out on an opportunity to really be yourself. So uh, for me, I'm aware that there is a separation between me and servant to some extent, but I really, I try to have, let's say, brand values of like authenticity, being real, um, honest, like all that kind of stuff. So that if I, like when I do go on tour and stuff like that, that I, it is as close to me as it possibly can. And maybe that's not healthy. Maybe it is, but there's, it's my there's way. <laughs> no right or, there's no right or wrong way. It's like every project is different and every artist's experience with their project or projects are different. You know, some of them, like the whole point is to be completely yeah. f- as far removed from who you are as possible. Like I think of Guar. I think of the band that like dresses up. Have you ever seen Guar before? They're like, no, it's no. a, oh my God, bro. You got to <laughs> look them up there. They, they, it's like they dress up like these crazy monsters and they put on this <laughs> whole show. It's, it's, it's theatric. It's, yeah. It's a performance and and that's such a cool thing like that's fucking art that's so so cool um so you know yeah there's there's no right or wrong way to do any of it i think it's like i think the danger is when you start maybe living in that world more than in yourself and in your own world and and you start using your own art as a form of escapism from like your own life and your own self that cut yeah oh man i do that i've done that it's uh yeah, it, it can become a very validating experience, like creatively, especially when you start to vibe with people in the same frequency and you're collaborating and you're working, um, talking with like cool people who are part of the industry. It becomes this thing that is an escape from the real. And I've got a lot of real personally. So I know that um, there is some juggle there because if all I'm if all I'm doing in my life with my kids and my, my wife and even my friendships, if all I'm doing is bringing this part of me, the the artist part of me, there's something missing and I'm, I'm lacking a deep connection there. And I, I, yeah, I have a lot of personal experience in that arena, but, Hmm. um, so, okay. Tell me a little bit more about like, what is like to coach artists? Like what kind of, what sort of things do you, did you see a lot of that? I know that you're sort of stepping away from the primary focus of artists and you're actually going into more masculinity and stuff like that, which I do want to talk about. Um, yeah. But like, what what made you, what was fulfilling? Like, what was interesting about working with artists? What did you learn from them? And what kind of issues did you see again and again? Why did you want to dive deeper? It's, it's funny because as a coach, a lot of times you end up coaching on the same shit that you're working on in your own life. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a lot of people, I, I realize, really come to me for discipline. They want to be more productive. They want to be have more self-discipline. They want to have better time management. They want to be, and because all of that is going to help them create better results, you know, because they're struggling with lack of focus. They're struggling with procrastination. They're struggling with laziness. And it's funny because that's all the same shit I struggle with too. <laughs> um, and, and so that's oftentimes, you know, I think what people kind of come to me for a lot of the transition though, has the, the, this, I guess, sort of realization and transition that I've been going through is, um, you know, more often than not, people come to coaching thinking they want one thing and then finding out so much more about themselves that like they didn't, we, you know, we didn't even plan on. And so it's like, well, you know, on the surface, it's like, oh, I want to make, more music and I want to like progress in my career. I want to, I want, I want to learn how to be, you know, more productive and manage my time better. Um, and then, 
you know, oftentimes, like, and what I saw, what I more recently kind of did start getting more into were some of these deeper topics about like masculinity, which I think masculine energy very much is connected to the, the ability to, you know, to, to, to grind and hustle and produce and like, like step into that kind of like warrior, warrior energy, like let's Mm -hmm. get, let's get shit done type of stuff. Um, but the, what's been really, I think, exciting has been when clients, you know, are opening up about some of, about some of these deeper, uh, these deeper things. And, and, you know, for, for me and my story, and, and which I think is actually very true for a lot of men is it's like, we didn't have fathers that really showed us how to be, you know, strong, powerful men. And, and when I say strong and powerful, I also mean like, like vulnerable and authentic. Right. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of us like didn't have fathers that were around or fathers were just so busy working uh, that they just weren't really there to, you know, to kind of like teach us these things. And, and I think it's a very common thing for a lot of men in our generation. So especially for like the male clients that I've had, we end up getting into this whole other territory that I'm just like, whoa, like I, this shit is like to me, it's so it's part of my journey right now. And I'm so passionate and intrigued about it. And like, like, you know, these are the books that I'm like reading and diving into and the people that I'm studying and, yeah. and, and really working on. So I've just realized like, yeah, that, that shit has been like really lighting me up. Um, so much more than like, Oh, like, let me help you figure out, uh, a better time management system. Yeah. You know? Like you want to do some better TikTok videos. Okay. Let's, uh, I, I know, <laughs> what, I know what you mean. Like, well, it's, if it resonates with what matters to you in a personal way, it's easier. Well, yeah, it's like, you're figuring them out and it's helping you figure you out too. And I think that that's like, that's one of the best ways to know what your life's purpose is. I think sometimes it's like looking internally and being like, what is it that I want to explore, improve, understand better? Like, what is it about me that is a mystery and like, or, or what, what is that, that's haunting me about my own character? What do I need to make better? Uh, which room in my house do I need to clean up? And if you're able to yeah. kind of look at that, sometimes they say the best way is to help someone else. So if you are in that territory and you're working with someone else, it's like me doing like, I don't know, I don't know, video work for other people and stuff like that. It's kind of like, I want to learn to be better at video work and I'm doing it for other people. And Mm -hmm. so it connects to what I ultimately want to get better at. And so it it feels rather fulfilling. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's where I think a lot of the, this, this, this decision to go in a different direction has been inspired by, I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of the conversations with art coaching artists as well is around creativity and the creative process. And, and I used to, you know, I used to teach a class on creativity. I taught this, uh, you know, Hmm. I I have so much knowledge and intellectual knowledge, um, teaching this class called the art of flow back at icon. But the part of me that fell out of alignment was I, you know, coaching is so different than teaching. It's like, I can teach you certain things, but um, there's a different level of certainty and a different level of truth that I get to speak from when I'm actually walking the path every day. And the reality is like, I'm not making music every day. So like I'm helping a lot of these people in their creative process, teaching them these sort of like intellectual concepts and techniques and exercises and stuff, which is great. But just for me personally, I'm like, I want to be, I want to be speaking deeply from the place of like my truth and my path and my journey, which just hasn't been the same as a lot of the, as a lot of the artists that I've been talking about. And now don't get me wrong. Like I'll still take on, um, I'll still take on as many artist clients as, as, uh, as, as I can handle, but I, <laughs> there's just a whole deeper level of transformation that's available to us now getting into these deeper topics about, um, you know, I guess, men's work and masculinity, which to me is still such a broad thing. I'm still really trying to figure out like, <laughs> what is that exactly? You know, like what, what are the, the specific, you know, issues and challenges and problems that, um, that I've worked through myself that I'm, that I'm really like feel very, very confident that I can help other people break through. That's yeah. the question I'm asking myself right now. Well, I think that's a very good question. Um, I think that you're, You're doing what you ought to be doing and you're always kind of reevaluating where you're at. And that's an important thing any human ought to do is you're taking your experience and your interests and proclivities and you're, you're flipping them on their head sometimes to really give a good look. I think that more people need to do that 
And so many of us just bury our heads in the sand and feel lost. Like I know myself, like with depression and stuff like that, like we've, we've talked in the past and it's a bit of a tangent. Let me, let me, let me circle back just for a second. We have a mutual friend named Hashem, uh, Shem Dehud, and he's an awesome dude. And he was someone that we were working with in some capacity doing some artist related stuff. And he was in a similar situation, it seems like he was really teaching. Like he, he was, he had uh, worked at Icon. He had, um, he's got some big name clients and he's been doing a lot of stuff in the industry, a lot of crazy experience. And that was so relative or so useful for the artists that he was working with, that he was building this sort of big monolithic teaching program, working with yeah. individuals. And it was sort of great. And then I think one day he looked at himself, I think it's fair to say, and was like, man, I'm a fucking artist. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm spending so much time developing this brand of Artist Pro that I'm not like actually walking the artist journey right now. And it's always something that I've wanted to do more of. I've wanted to explore. And so he kind of like stepped back a little bit, dove yeah. in, and then he started, yeah, he's pumping out stuff. He's collaborating. He's hitting Spotify I'm, playlists. I'm so glad you you, br- you brought up Hashem because he he has been on my mind as I've been going through this 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 transition which is very very fresh really just in this last week did i make this decision but as soon as i made the decision he's the first one i thought of because (laughs) what actually really helped me make this decision is i've spent the last like two over two months building this building this entire like this entire online program dumping everything i know about the artist journey um and and it's been in the process of creating this program that i just realized i'm like oh like I don't really want to do this. Like, I don't really <laughs> want to teach this. And so it, in, a, in a funny way, we both came to the same place of like running these programs as these like teachers. And we both came from icon being teachers. Yeah. Um, and then, and then just had these insights and these realizations through the process of teaching, you know, his decision was like, I really want to be an artist and go in that direction. Um, my, my decision is kind of the other way. Like I yeah. really don't want to be an artist and I want to go in this other direction. Um, but it's it's so cool. I think our paths have been so par- parallel, and and Hashem's a he's an amazing guy and really an inspiration because so much what I'm realizing is so much of the process of growth is actually about letting go. Like this is the big key lesson and takeaway that I've come to realize is is we have to let go of the things that no longer serve us that no longer light us up, that no longer bring inspiration. We have to let go of the things that are challenging and that there isn't flow towards in order to create space and create room for the things that really need to come up, that that really deserve to be there. And the thing is, is like, that's actually so fucking scary to do, especially if that thing is making you money. I can't tell you how many artists, (laughs) I can't tell you how many artists I know that it's like they created this brand and they're out on tour, they're making money, but they actually don't even like making, they don't even like that fucking music anymore. They're playing the same records every day. And Ooh, soul sucking. But it's, it's making them money so they can't let go of it or they're too scared to let go of it. Um, guys like Brills, who, who just dropped his project Brills, he was like a full blown touring, you know, touring the world, making good money DJ and just realized like, Hey man, I'm sick of playing these same records every night. I'm going to completely scrap this entire project and start another one from ground zero and, you know, let go of a lot of money, let go of a lot of stuff. And now is like super successful in his next thing. He had the courage to do that. And I think that's the process I've been going through as well. It's like, I built this entire program. Um, it, it makes logical, logically makes no sense for me to just like not run the program and not sell it and, and not capitalize right. on it. But it's like in my heart, do I really care about it so much or do I, you know, do I feel excited about it? Like I, I, I really don't. Um, so can I be okay with walking away from it? I have, I have two clients, literally I had conversations last night with two clients where I was just like, Hey, you know what? Like this, I'm not really excited about this anymore. I don't know if this is, I don't think that this is, you know, this, this isn't, this isn't the direction that I want to go, like where you want to go and where I want to go. Um, having the, the, the courage and the willingness to know like, Hey, there's, there's a couple thousand dollars that I'm letting go of right now. Um, right. and, and trusting that like by letting go of that, I know that the right people are going to show up. The people that like are really aligned with, with, with my energy and where I'm at and where I'm going. It's, um, it can be a challenging thing to do. And, but it's so, it's so important. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like when you, 
when you left Icon, right? Like you were kind of like stepping out into the wilderness a bit of like, huh, like I have like, you know, work. That- Icon, Icon was different. I can't, I can't take credit for walking away. I got pushed out of the nest. <laughs> uh, I was, I was wanting to, I was kind of planning my exit, but that's I was right, too that's scared. Right. I, Cause I was like, that's my fucking salary. That's my day job. Like yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't ready to go full time with coaching yet. I was like, yo, I need to save up money. I was like, Oh, this is, this is a scary ass jump to make. So, um, I, I give full credit to Christopher is the owner of icon. And he was just like, Hey bro, like I, I can tell you don't care about this job yeah. anymore. I can <laughs> tell how excited you are to go and do coaching. And I can also tell that you're too fucking scared to like take the leap. So I'm going to make this easy for you. Uh, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to give you a severance package. And like, yeah. you just need to fucking, you just need to fucking go for it. And like, God bless him. You know, that was such a, that was, uh, I mean, the, the universe like aligned so well and so perfectly. And, and, and I do put a lot of my faith into something bigger out there. That's like supporting us, you know, call yeah. it whatever you want. But like when that kind of shit happens, it was like, Oh, cool. That really like, I, I, you know, I wouldn't have been able to, I mean, not that I wouldn't have been able to, but he really helped with that process, you know? Yeah. Well, I think that perspective is really important and you have, you have it in spades where like you're, it's almost like you're looking at the universe, you're looking at whatever is out there providing, be it God, be it something less, uh, I don't know, less sin- singular than that. And you're willing to take everything kind of as an opportunity because like I've been in a similar situation. Like I've been fired from a couple of jobs, like fired, like not gently pushed out like okay you need to go buddy (laughs) but like you're not a good fit and and i wasn't you know like i'm adhd i discovered this last year i have trouble with focus and stuff like that and it's like i just got to do what i want to do and i had been in jobs that i could charm the pants off of people and get into the position and do a really good job at the start of it but then like it very quickly catches up that like i don't care about this this is not Mm. what i want to (laughs) do i'm spending a lot of time being here boy, this is hard. And, um, I've kind of sabotaged myself and I've had moments like in the yeah. sabotage where I've, I've been fired, let's say. Um, and I just feel like, what am I going to do now? Like, and I, and it's like, is this an opportunity or is this not an opportunity? And the, the, is this tragedy and my mm-hmm. proclivity to embrace it as tra- tragedy is, is kind of like, uh, like their hands that want to grab that, they're they they're thankfully weak hands. They don't hold on too long, and eventually yeah, yeah. I'm able to. Okay, this is actually an opportunity. I'm actually going to mold my life in the direction I want to go, and I I've I've been through it. Like this last year, I went full hog into making video work for people, where I had to quit everything else. I was getting clients, and it was kind of scary because it's like, is this going to dry up? And then. And then it kind of did with some COVID stuff over Christmas. I like lost some work yeah. all of a sudden and I'm like, what's going on? But I used it as an opportunity to really dig into my creative process and think like, what do I want to do? And how, how can I craft my freelance lifestyle into like doing podcasts as well and making music and collaborating, like all the things that I really enjoy, how can I tie it all together? And so it actually wound up being this wonderful thing. And my wife was on maternity leave too. So I was having like coffee with her every morning. So that was really good bonding. And nice. I'm, I really, I really sympathize with, yeah, the artists, like the people like, like us who have had that identity issue where it's like, mm-hmm. you're, tr- you're grasping onto one thing and just to let go is so hard. Yeah. Uh, and, and you've done it so well and you're really real about it. Like you're not, you just sort of recognize that this, like, they're not even pillars to hold in a way. It's like, they're things that are part of you, but they're not the whole you. And you're able to, to step back and take a more holistic approach. What do you, what do you think makes it difficult for yourself or for artists to like, I guess, let go when you talk about, you know, grabbing a hold Hmm. tightly of things, what makes that hard? I think that art, hmm, I, so this is actually a little bit of a masculine point for myself, just about men in particular. Do um, you ever see Fight Club? Yeah. Okay, man. Of course. So Fight Club, um, I never read the book. Uh, it, I saw it very late in my life. And I was really moved by this moment where Brad Pitt is talking to this group of guys who are all just kind of 
riffraff and they're lost and they're, they're kind of falling into this cult-like mentality. And he says something like, man, we were all, we were told we were going to be movie stars. We were going to be, um, you know, like award-winning athletes. Like we were going to be all these special things, but we're just, we're not that. We're just average. Like we're just a, just a person or so, something I'm paraphrasing, but he was like, that was my childhood. And that as an artist, you can, you look up to the stars. It's like, man, one day I'll be in LA and I'll be collaborating and doing all these wonderful, amazing things. And I'll be featured on programs. And it's like, you never consciously think that that's going to be the thing you're dreaming about, but it seeps in. And so you're holding on to that. So when you have to let go of that, like for me to let go of servant, let's say that would be like a cataclysmic identity change because servant is the thing that I've been pouring my life into. It is, it's like aligned so much meaning and purpose that if I wasn't servant, what am I? Mm. What, what would I possibly be? Like, would I matter? I think uh, existential question of do I matter is a mm. big one that artists well, can face. And what's your answer to those questions? I would say my answer is twofold. I know in intellectual, I know that I matter. I, I'm a father, uh, I'm a husband, I'm a friend. And, uh, and sometimes I do make music that people do reach out and say it connected with them. I know that like what I'm doing, my impact on the world around me does matter, but it doesn't always feel like that. And both of those are a kind of reality. You know, it's true, but it doesn't always feel true. And it's okay if it doesn't feel true sometimes, it, mm. you know. And, 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 and if I can just offer a reflection, what I heard in that is, I know that I matter because I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a good friend, and, some, and, I, and, I, and I make music still all of the worthiness is attached to something outside of yourself. Yeah, you got me there. <laughs> can you matter? Can you matter just because you're here? Just because you were born? Just because you've arrived on this planet that the worthiness and the mattering is already inherent. You don't have to be a husband. You don't have to be a father. You don't have to be an artist or a friend to matter. That it's like, that's already, it's already there, you know, like that's the place for us to get to when we can get to that. It's like, I don't need to fucking prove myself to anybody. Right. Yeah. I'm already here. I already am everything that I need to be. It's like, we don't need to go gain anything. We already have it all. We were born with it all. What we need to do, what we need to do is let go of the ideas and the programming and the trauma and the childhood, you know, fucking stories that came up, we came up with that told us we don't matter. And the only way that we will matter is to go out and make great art and become a fucking movie star. Then you'll matter. That's the shit that we have to let go of. And the deeper we can crack those layers and get into the deepest level of the core of who we are, what we're going to find is total fucking worthiness and, and, and infinite potential and pure joy and pure love and all of the shit that we're, that we're chasing after anyways. It's like our shadow. Like it's already there. You yeah. Know? That's the real, that's the real work, man. And, and yeah, it's like a great intellectual concept. Cool. But can you actually, can you yeah. feel that? And that, that's what I'm getting to now is like a, so much of the stuff that I've done is, has been mental coaching, mindset coaching, like, cool, I can post a story and it can land from my brain to your brain. Right. But none of, none of that matters unless we feel it in our heart. We feel it in our body. Can I bring myself to that place every day of feeling like I fucking matter? You right? know, that's, in, that's really interesting. It kind of makes me think like feelings too are, they can have like limitations, right? And I find, I find that for myself, I've had to put feelings in check sometimes where like, you know, like, let's say I'm feeling like I don't matter. Like I feel like I, I put so much work into something and I put it out there and it gets very little, if any response or people don't notice the algorithm crushes it. It's a very common experience for me to be like, wow, there's enough people doing what I do. Why do I need to add to that? Does it really matter? All that effort, all that. And I can just sort of feel in that space, but I have intellectually, my mind has said like, this too is going to pass like this feeling 
you know that this feeling is sort of a reflex, but that ultimately the day is going to come, like it's going to move on. You're going to find yourself in studio again. You're going to be making, you're going to be in that place where you're really connected with the, where the feelings are going to return. Um, that's been kind of helpful for me. Uh, do I wish that the feelings were, let's say, more consistent or that I'm able to put something out there? Yeah. And, and I can say that for myself, I've made some progress in not, it's like not caring, not putting my worth in other people's opinions. That That's a very useful skill. But it's it's such a funny struggle for the artist. And you've gotten to see so much of it just working with individuals that I, I think that that's just such a useful, useful thing for my audience too. Like for somebody who isn't just an artist themselves, but who has literally been paid to work with artists like again and again and again and again. And for you to see these kinds of issues like boil down to this root time and time again, it almost says something about the pathology of being an artist. Like it does. Yeah. I wonder how many of us would even feel the need to be an artist if we just had that at our core, that sense of worth, yeah. that sense of value, yeah. you know? Well, that's that's the difference is where is the creativity coming from? Is it coming from the place of I am so I am so full and I am so grounded in that space of worthiness that now everything that comes out is just pure expression. This is just pure overflow of the expression of who and what I am. And I, I just love this process of creating Yeah. versus I need to make something so that somebody can hear it and that somebody can tell me that I'm worthy. And, and that's the question I think for most artists to really ask themselves is like, where is it coming from? My God, that's so profound. Like I, just the way you put that, I've been in both places, you know, I've been in both yeah. places. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, it's not just artists. It's like, people go out to make a bunch of money because they think when they make a bunch of money, you know, go be a stockbroker because then you'll be wealthy and successful and people will love you. Like go find the right partner and that right partner will, will then validate you and make you feel like you're worthy or whatever. And so it's like, it's, it's not just artists. Artists is just, a, it's just one particular interesting Avenue, but this is just mm -hmm. what we do as humans, you know, yeah. I think, uh, especially in Western culture, probably more than anywhere. Yeah, totally. So, I know you've got to jump right away, and uh, I feel like we got into the deep end really fast <laughs> and uh, waited around, and I really appreciate your time. So um, yeah. where can people find you on social media? Yeah, hit me up. I'd love to connect with anybody. Always happy to, you know, jump on a call and, and dive into some, you know, cool conversations. If anyone's interested in coaching and learning more about what that looks like, hit me up on Instagram. Uh, Nick Cherwink, Nick underscore Cherwink, N-I-K underscore C-H-E-R-W-I-N-K. Should be pre pretty easy to find the only Nick Cherwink out there. Yeah. But would love to connect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you again. It's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. Um, and it's just nice catching up with you. It's been a while since we've we've talked. So. It is, man. I appreciate you having me on. Thanks so much. And um, yeah, man, let's stay in touch. Absolutely. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. If you found any of this valuable, please consider subscribing, recommending this to a friend, or leaving a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you happen to be listening. If you watch this on my Servant YouTube channel or Facebook page, please leave a comment and share. I love to hear from my listeners and learn from them. Learn more about me at www.servant.com. That's S-R-V-E-N-T dot com. Thank you again for your time. Now go be creative and sing.